I want to talk to us about activities of spirits around believers. That is the theme. Activities of spirits around believers. It's important that we understand that there are activities of spirits. In the body of Christ, one of the challenges you find is that there's emphasis put on some things and then other things are not being emphasized. But sometimes those things that are not being emphasized are very important. There are activities of spirit on earth. Listen, understand that the earth is a pool of spirit. By reason of the fall, there have been intrusions of spirit into the earth realm. And understand, when spirit come to the earth, they seek to find expression. And the only way that they can find expression on earth is through the medium of the creation. And man is the highest of God's creation on earth. So when they come, they desire that through us, they will express their will. They will be made manifest. Because spirit can be seen. You can't easily feel them. You can feel them when their activities are expressed through mortars. They want to enslave men so that men will be the tools that they will use. Say, I refuse to be a slave of any spirit. We are the target of all kinds of spirits. When we walk on the earth, you are a target. Anybody, any man on the earth is a target. You see, the moment Satan came into the garden, he didn't go and look for the lion. He went straight to Adam because he understood that the authority, the governing authority on earth is handed over to man. The governing authority in the family, in the territory, is handed over to men. Men are chosen to pioneer civilizations, different moves, different things on earth. And the things that men are supposed to pioneer are the things that spirit want to use as tools to colonize men on the earth. So maybe God might have given you a voice to sing. When spirit come, they see you as a tool because through your voice, they will be able to establish their dominion over other people, over other men. They will be able to enslave a section of the human race through your voice. They may find you as an apostle of God carrying a mandate. And they understand that by the agency of that mantle, of that governmental authority given to you by God, they will be able to now enslave many. They can have a harvest from your labor. So, when they come, they attempt to infiltrate the lives of individuals. They attempt to enslave individuals. Understand that the devil is not only interested in possession. He is interested in oppression. We call something oppression and suppression. That the devil, he will attempt to possess you. If it's not possible, he will want to what? Oppress you. If it's not possible, he will want to what? Suppress you. So that you can't rise. Oppression has got to do with afflictions, attacks, different things that incapacitate you in one way or the other. It's like suppression means that he is attempting to lower you to the lowest form that you will be impotent in the hands of God. You will be impotent as far as the will of God and the purposes of God are concerned. So we need to understand the activities then we can position ourselves intentionally to bring the will of God to pass. I want to first show us you know, the revelation of the activities of spirit both in the Old and New Testament. Then when I finish, I will come to address us. Both in the Old and the New Testament, we see the presence of spirit. Now, in the Old Testament, emphasis was not being put on spiritual activities because most of their engagement was in the physical. Now, there were spiritual activities behind the scene, but they were not emphasizing it. They were the gods of Egypt, the gods of Babylon, all of that. that we, we, we are introduced to the, the prince and the kings of Persia. We know that the angel of death entered into Egypt. We know that sorceress and the enchanters of Egypt against Moses. Rod turned into serpent. That is not a possibility in the natural realm. It is only a possibility that can be engineered by spirit. By the potency of the spirit realm. And from there, we see different engagement. In First Chronicles, we see that the Bible says that and Satan 
stood against Israel and moved David to Namal Israel. And when he did, God was angry and God came and started to kill the people. Ahab wanted to go to war against Ramon Gilead. And he called Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat came. He said, and they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. There can be peace between you and the enemy for three years. Because the enemy finds out that he can't do anything about you anymore. Let's leave him for a time. So, and it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servant, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. There are certain spaces that are meant to be under the governing influence of the Christ that are still in possession and in custody of principalities and powers in darkness and saviors who have to arise to overthrow those princes there are families that before they were born they were enlisted that prophet will rise from this family some families they've enlisted them that certain mantles are supposed to originate from those families but the devil knows so when such families begin to rise sometimes he engineers an activity that can now lead to the people running back to satan to cut a covenant with him and then he now on the strength of those covenant is able to take custody of that prophetic or whatever mantle it is and then he converts it instead of prophet rising it is sorceress and enchanters and witches native doctors they are the ones that will begin to rise. They are native doctor, witches. They all operate from the frequency of the prophetic deposit. You will need that deposit to be able to operate it. To operate in any of those cycles. So, the devil now cut covenant and then he takes over that operation and converts it into demonic operations. Because he saw it. Understand that Eden was supposed to be the place that God lives. It was supposed to be the place of peace, the place of the presence of God. But the devil, he, he found out that this is where the presence of God should be domiciled. And then he came from behind and through deception and corruption and disobedience, he turned that place into another thing. The earth became corrupted. So it is possible with families. It is possible with individuals. Somebody who is supposed to be a prophet can be a malam. Someone who is supposed to be an apostle can be a, a top musician in the nation. That is apostolic. Most of these top guys, their stars are being converted by darkness and being used to recruit people into the demonic kingdom. There are lands, there are people that must be redeemed. But until their redeemers come, they might not be able to rise until the redeemers of those lands there are certain villages that are waiting for some of us here some of your village is waiting for you let me continue and the king of Israel said unto his servant know ye that Ramoth Gilead is ours and we be still and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria and he said unto Jehoshaphat will thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead so he said, Ramoth Gilead is supposed to be ours, but it is in the hands of who? Syria. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. So far, there are things that are supposed to be in your hands, but it is in the hands of Syria. There are lands that are supposed to be in our hands, but it is in the hands of Syria. Sorcerers have taken over. The spiritual atmosphere of Ghana is dominated by sorcerers and enchanters. You you know, we thank God for, you know, half hour and those like the, the people are praying into the night and all of that, you know, because it will go a long way to help. At least in the night, you see that there's energies rising. But there were some things that happened previously that handed over the spiritual atmosphere to occultists, to sorcerers. And the prince that is in charge is the one that opened the gate for those people. So all the voices that you know that we're reigning, you, you know that this one, there's a problem. But the ones that you know don't have a problem, they don't reign. 
but we pray that in our generation there will be a swap in the name of Jesus Christ we have to take it I said we have to do what take it because the more those people rule the more they cast spells the more they cast spells over the nation they lock the gate more such so that it becomes difficult and if you don't take care the, the nation will now be enslaved by the spirit that they invoke but God will help us he said, and he said unto Joseph, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramon Gilead? And Joseph said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people art, my horses as thy horses. And Joseph said unto the king of Israel, Enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophet together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramon Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into thy hand of the king. And Joshua said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Joshua was a man of God. He had sharp discerning. When the people came with all the caricature that they were doing, they looked at their atmosphere, the things, that, how they were behaving. He had been with true prophets because Judah was usually with God, Israel was almost all the time away from God. So I pray for one lady. Later, I was speaking with her. She said she had been to a lot of places. Then she said, "But when you see that the true ones, you know." It was later she explained to me what you know what she meant because she said some of the places that she has gone, some of them want to sleep with her and all, all kinds of things. More, they, they want to take money from her with all kinds of ideas. Then she said, "When you see the true, so Joseph had knew he had he had contemplated true." prophetic ministry that was domiciled in, in Judah so when they came and did all the charade that they did and he looked at them he said Kai these people I'm not really convinced and he said do we have another prophet he said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord look at the statement after prophets have come to prophesy he said besides that we might inquire of him and the king of Israel said unto Joshua, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. You know, evil people hate good people. Meanwhile, good people don't hate evil people. The guy goes to seal, you go and choke, and then he's angry at you. He's not angry at himself for stealing. But you that went to report. Someone does a wrong thing. You sanction him or her. And then the person is angry at you. But what you did that was wrong. Why don't you <laughs> say Lord help me. In the name of Jesus. He was doing all the wrong thing. But he's now against the prophet. Because he's telling him the truth. Then the king of Israel called an officer. And said hasten he died. Micaiah the son of Imla and the king of Israel and Joshua the king of Judah sat each on his throne having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria and all the prophet prophesied before them and Zedekiah the son of Chenana made him horns of iron and he said that says the Lord he was lying with this shall thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them he made a rod and and he came with a rod of horns and he said that that says the Lord with this we shall push them <laughs> and all the prophet prophesied so saying go up to Ramon Gilead and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand don't try to prophesy when you know her. it's not like as we are here it's not like we can prophesy we can say some things but to give direction to people's lives in terms of prophetic you have to be really be sure and really be accurate the details must be very accurate you can't guess it you can use word of knowledge to advise people but you can't try to direct people just by guessing something and then no 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 it is it is dangerous it is what dangerous 
it's about some things you want to pray for people, no problem. But if it's about giving direction, if not, just talk like a normal person. Even if you have prophetic information. We don't try to do so many prophetic here. Not because we can't say something. But if I tell you you are a woman of God and I don't say it well, it can change the way you think your desire, the what you want to do, it is terrible. So there should be a lot of caution that must be exercised. We pray for a certain lady. You know, before we went to, I think I went with a prosecutor to call her. There was something that they were going to do. And before we went there, they were in a, a prayer meeting. So we went there and then the guy was talking, saying, you know, it is done. Meanwhile, me, I know it is not done. The reason why I went there to pick her was because I know it is not done. They say it is done. It is, you know. So they finished. We waited. We picked her. We came here. When we came, I just said, "Any power that want to disgrace you or something." I didn't even then the demon say you will not get it. <laughs> but I think they say it is done. <laughs> the being is now saying that. You know, she's not going to, we have locked it. You will not allow her. So by what? Like the guy went to slap Micaiah. You will see it. He said, from where did the spirit of God pass from me to you? <laughs> so from where did the spirit pass to now tell him that it is done? Maybe it is faith. You know, Bible says we should prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Be sure. Be very sure. Say you, 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 God, do, you do ministry in the U.S. You have to be sure. Be sure that people holding on the information you are holding on to, there should be credibility, track record. Don't be randomly. No, I'm not against prophecy and prophetic. We bring prophet, we prophesy here. Is someone in this place? So I'm not against the prophetic ministry, but I'm saying that you see. There are many people who prophesy. I mean, people prophesy to me everywhere. Some, you just take it as too big. It's not something that you are hanging on that. Say, but people prophesy. Ah. I went somewhere with one of my friends. He said, dangerous prophet. But the guy who is prophesying now said, I see the, the, a, a, a guru, a guru businessman. <laughs> that is a guess. There are a lot of young people who want to impress. They want to impress. I said there are a lot of young people who want to what? Impress. Now, there are also genuine people whose eyes are open, whose senses are activated, they can hear. So, the point I'm making is that what? You have to check track record. Listening is not wrong. I'm not saying despise it. But the person should have a track record of his prophecies coming to pass of you knowing that this person has gone through this process of burden and training. If not, you will host something that is now giving direction to your life and the relation that you are having. I pray for one guy. Someone told him that, oh, this place, when you pray for you, some things will go through. So, he had applied for some visa and all of that. So, after I prayed for some time, the thing was not going. So, I went to inquire of the Lord. Then, I said that the, the agent that you use is fake. So, how is it going to work? It is fake. We are praying that the thing will go through, but the agent you are using is a scammer. They have scammed you, and there's no document going through that the angel of the Lord will now come and go and fast forward. It processing. So, you have to what? apply again. So, you receive a word. Sometimes you have to what? hold on to it. Some word, when you receive, you, you, you hold it, but you don't move with it necessarily. You pray, you are praying into it. If the track record is not there, me I don't. It's not everybody that you prophesy that to me. As my wife is here, I won't mind yourself. Those days when we started ministry, we went for some program and we went for some missions. And after we so come and see these guys, prophetic. <laughs> so they called me and one guy stood up and said that you see, the Lord is, and then he started saying, it's like. What is it like? It's like there's a problem. It is 
or it is not <laughs> so it's like um, you are you are going too fast he said because it's like god is going and you are following that and now you have gone ahead and god is following you so i said what dress is god wearing you ask you have seen him following me <laughs> you describe the one you saw following me let me see if he's not satan <laughs> are you trying to tell me that <laughs> and usually they will get angry okay a true prophet will now convince you by bringing more details alright because he's not limited I guess I is limited so once you despise that one there's no information but if you say your name is Kwame then I say my name is not Kwame a prophet who knows what he's saying he will now be quiet look at you, I've been probably for a long time he will look at you and he will now tell you some other things that will confirm to you and the messenger that was going to call Micaiah spake unto him saying behold now the words of the prophet declare good unto the king with one mouth let thy word I pray thee be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good and Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee? that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. Ah. Is it a problem? You know, I said the guy doesn't say good about you. The guy now came and he's saying good. And you are now saying, how many times will I adjure you to speak the truth? Ah. And the guy too now said, let me just, let me, let me, let me just release it. (laughs) And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd means the shepherd is the king if they are scattered a sheep without a shepherd interpret it and the Lord said this have no master let them return every man to his house in peace and the king of Israel said unto you Jehoshaphat did I not tell thee that you prophesy no good concerning me but evil and he said hear thou therefore the word of the Lord I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left and the Lord said who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramon Gilead and one said on this manner and another said on that manner and they came forth a spirit he said what and they came forth what a spirit now this is actually where I wanted us to come to so all the other ones is bonus he said, and they came forth with a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore behold, the Lord that put a lying spirit in the mouth of all this thy prophet and the Lord has spoken evil concerning it. But Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek. He slapped him. Forget about the nice way he says, smote him on the cheek. The cheek is this place. So he went and did. And he said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord? He is the custodian of the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> From me to speak unto thee. He has now personalized God like he's the one that <laughs> now I just wanted you to understand something here. Now the activity we see here is the activities of what lying spirits. It is the activities of lying spirits, spirit that propagate lies. Now that is one of the branches of the forces of darkness, lies connected to what lying spirit. I said we are looking at activities of what spirit around what believers around Christians in the lives of Christians 
there are different ways that spirit want to enslave us as God's people. And I, I said that if demons know they can't possess you, they want to oppress you, suppress you. They want to afflict you. In one way or the other, the devil wants to extend his governing influence into the life of the Christian. He might want you to go, but even if you have to go, he wants to keep something with you. That reduces the effect of the God life that you have received. That reduces the manifestation of the God life that you have received. And we have to understand this thing so that we can rebel. Because whenever you submit to a spirit, the Bible says in Romans that if you if you obey the spirit or you submit to a spirit, you become what a slave of that spirit. It can begin with something in the flesh, but soon, sooner than not, a spirit takes over. So the person now becomes a liar by profession. Okay, let me show you something else. Let's read another. I'll come and talk about all of this. But I want us to read another scripture. I just want you to understand what is going on. Let's come to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, this is also the Spirit of God. So we are looking at activities of spirit. God is also a spirit. But we will now focus more along the line on demonic activities. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood, it means spirit. If it's not flesh and blood, then it's what? Spirit. Had revealed the, it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that it was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. You know, uh, we'll come here again when I want to talk about the portals. How do spirits gain access over individuals? Okay. They can gain access through your weaknesses. Peter was a compassionate guy. Phlegmatic. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou sovereignest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. So Jesus now looks at Peter and then finds out that there is an activity of Satan going on around, around Peter. At that time, Peter had been infiltrated. And not to do something that is evil necessarily. You know, sometimes we want to attack people. And we think, oh, this one went to steal. This one went to fornicate. And then you, you are attacking. But what you don't know is that the, the fact that you are even attacking means that you are under the influence of another spirit. Noah got drunk and slept in his own room. Naked. In his own room. <laughs> I said naked way. In his own room. You are permitted to be naked in your own room isn't it and the son you now intruded into your father's room and found him naked who, who is wrong huh? the one that is naked in his own room <laughs> and then this guy now began to manifest spirit of dishonor 
and began to say things and began to laugh and mock and comes under a case now no one might be wrong because probably he was drunk but he also now walking in dishonor in that spirit of dishonor was also wrong now there's an activity going on around him understand this some are under the influence of spirit of lust they may exhibit lustful activities some are under the spirit of theft and stealing and all kinds of things spirit of worldliness it, it may be glaring because you know that's the way society sees it but there are some of us that are also working we are under the influence and the controlling power of the prince of pride and it is equally terrible sometimes even what more terrible peter didn't do anything bad it wasn't a spirit of lust that came upon peter it wasn't a, even a lying spirit or spirit of theft he didn't go and steal the activity around peter it didn't look like evil to you no jesus said that i'll be betrayed i'll be i'll be scorched and then he now said that no 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 you will not die you shall live to declare the goodness of the lord sometimes some of you when you say i'm called to do the ministry that your, your mother or your father some, you have to be there are activities around believers there are activities of spirit there are things when you say sometimes your roommate fight you when you declare something you want to do for god then certain people begin to now say things sometimes they are under the influence in fact not sometimes in most cases they are under the influence there are activities if you know what is going on in the spirit realm i told you about my experience at at vacu when i was a student i go to every hall i go to Nkroma, castle everywhere i go and preach i was a castfordian i was in castle so i just had the belief that every day i must enter some rooms and then it goes on so when i go and pray i go for lectures if you, there's break time i go and preach and this time when i walked into the place you know they were they were having i think vaco is one of the places that they like this worldly music and worldly atmosphere every day i don't know about now but in our days it was worse those guys that control the spinners every day they are they want to spin so they were all over the place a lot of them and when i entered the place i went to a1 a2 when i entered a1 and i came out i was waiting to enter a2 then the gentleman now came and he said you are a man of god isn't it i didn't answer i just looked at him and i smiled then he said i said you are a man of god isn't it i still looked at him i didn't say anything because i didn't know what to say i'm more interested in what he has to say next don't be quick to answer questions <laughs> it's contractual agreement <laughs> so when i didn't then he now said if you will let me he said all these people are under, under my control he stretched the hand the girls and the, they were moving you know i think i don't know what they were having what they were doing at that time but they were you know dressed half naked and all of that moving around the whole place and he said all these people are under my control if you let me i'll bring them into your ministry so I, I just looked at him as one funny guy because my mind was not even on the spirit realm my mind was on just i was like this guy is too but the scripture that came to my mind is it is god that gave the increase at that time but i didn't tell him i didn't say it to him i said it to myself because that was the scripture that came it is god that gave the increase so in other words you can't give him any attention so i i just stood there looked at him he looked at me he was asking me the question over and over i didn't say anything then he left so in the night i was praying i was like what is going on i mean the thing couldn't leave me how the guy now could say all oh, these people are under my control i mean it doesn't mean everybody in, in in the hall but there were a group of people that were dancing and doing and he made reference to to those category he said all oh, these people and whilst i was praying the night then i tested probably i called him that ah, i went to this place i don't get the point so as we were talking 
and then we we're praying then he now said the lord has opened my eyes he said he's seen a being with horns yeah it's a territorial spirit and he said that's the being that came. he came to cut covenant so when you just say yes you have shifted allegiance you don't need to go and consult a native doctor when you deal with territorial spirit and principality they don't need native doctors it is idols lesser spirits those princes they deal with sorceress and enchanters it's different now that is that is an activity of a spirit the, the, the guy was not aware you know i told you how i got to know the guy was not aware after that incident happened and i got to know okay this is a territorial spirit they wanted to take charge they've seen that okay as we are coming into the territory this is what we are going to do and they have come early to to cut covenant covenant simply means agreement the covenant that can be sealed with blood we call it blood covenant but the covenant is not that you met you went to some no a covenant is just an agreement it can take place even in your dream yeah different forms of covenant are established or sealed with different kinds of things sometimes it can just be a handshake so you have to have discerning they can make the enchantment say if i go and she greets me like the daughter of jephthah who met her didn't know that part of that said whatever meet me first but it didn't work there are activities of spirit around individuals when you see men i said when you see men you are looking at what the expressions of the will of spirit anytime a man is approaching you a woman is approaching you don't look at the man first look at what is the will of whatever spirit that is behind what is the will because some of you may be serving god and then a, a spirit comes to overthrow you because you couldn't discern that this person coming there's a spirit behind this talk has a spirit this is an influence men are under influences jesus was quick to know that peter is not alone satan is there first chronicle chapter 21 he said, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. David was lying down one day and he woke up and he said, let me go and number Israel. Meanwhile, that energy was communicated by what? Satan. Officer devil. So you may wake up with a thought. I said, you may wake up with what? With a thought. And sometimes not a bad thought necessarily you can wake up with what with a thought with a desire with an ambition tell somebody pray first as they do what pray first yeah pray first <laughs> the way the earth realm is if you are not careful you take your mind off spirit activities but i've shown you they said they went to tell lies and the lies was what by a lying spirit peter he had a good intention but his intention is blocking the will of god his intention will be a limitation a hindrance to the will of god And Jesus looks at Peter and said that get thee behind me, Satan. We are made to believe that it is only when you see someone who, like maybe the person is sinning, like and sinning is by your own definition of sin. That's when you think someone has come under demonic influence. But listen, in fact, there is no believer that doesn't have a spirit, a principality a power from the sea or that is assigned to attempt to sway that person away almost everybody that you find in the body their assignment of spirit and the whole assignment is to sway you from the will of god or to enslave you some people's own might be more evident because they might fall into the category of what we think is more important to be described as sin and as activities of, of demons but you can wake up with the thought that you will go and execute 
which in natural sense it might not touch on anything that people may look and say this one is evil you know uh, there are spirit working around you some of you don't come to church because spirit are hindering you there are hindrances that is posed before you there's an attempt of the enemy to ensure that you don't go or you don't go far in your work with God you are being impeded by powers it's an activity of darkness around you you are not tired it's not because of tiredness and mind you spirit can even create tiredness and God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and God did what that capacity to, to cause deep sleep is, it is with spirit I said that capacity to cause what deep sleep is with spirit in certain moments they can cause a deep sleep to fall upon you certain people that had accident it wasn't just because they had to sleep it was at that time that the spell or the spirit that is assigned was activated then all of a sudden I have driven many times that you know I know we went to Tampa and I was coming I mean ha. I was happy when we entered UCC when we entered the gates I said my God <laughs> it's not the <laughs> listen I have stated the whole thing I tell you most of those things that happen you know, before an accident will happen physically it has happened spiritually before death why I don't fear death is because death will have to take place in the spirit if not it can't happen physically death cannot be accidental it is a programmed and a well executed plan of, of darkness people who die they know they will die they know. I said people who die, they did what? They know. They, when they are there, they know you are going to die. You will die soon. Your time has come to die. They know. They will begin to even dream and see dead stuff. Dead mothers, dead fathers, dead uncles. Coffin, cemetery, funerals. They are trying to alert you that you have been brought to the realm of death. He said, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. You can wake up with a thought. Now, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, that's when three nations came against Judah. And the Bible says that when they came against them, and Jehoshaphat led the people and they cried unto God. The Bible says what happened was that the Lord set an ambushment against them. Do you know what happened? There was conflict between the three nations and they fought and killed themselves. So, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonite came against Jehoshaphat to battle. They came against him but in the midst of the battle the, the Lord came and then confusion. So part of the activity of demons is to create misunderstandings. Any time that you are seeing two friends fighting, brother and sister, sister and sister, husband and wife, brother and brother, a man of God and associate, member and pastor, two members, instrumentalist versus instrumentalist, the head of choir department versus the head of media department. You are seeing activities of spirit. And as a Christian, you have to check yourself quickly. You have to free yourself from being a slave and being a tool in the hands of such a spirit. I said, and when they had begun to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon and Moab and Manseah, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Angels were released. Spirits were released. 
and when those spirits came what happened was what confusion misunderstanding disagreement violence you see violence you are seeing spirit don't go and say oh, this place where there can be violence if you like bring military men you can't change it there's a ruling power but for you what you have to do when you see these things is to go sit back and say i refuse to be a slave of any spirit of division when you see division you are seeing spirit families are divided do you know why because they know the unity of that family will now lead to the fulfillment of the purposes of god when husband and wife are, are together they can do so much but certain families you, you, you can't do so much so when they come they split them they can be married and still be divided they are lowering your potential he said one shall chase a thousand two will not chase two thousand or three thousand two will now put ten thousand to flight so two means times what times ten but the devil now want to cause a division and, a, and separation and we allow it we become slaves you go into places christian brother and christian brother in a room roommates but there's disagreement the enemy can read and go ahead and find out that if these people are together in the next two three years through this one this one will meet this person and it will lead to something like this so the best way to truncate it is to create that confusion at that time you will think it is normal if it's normal the devil will leave you when it is normal i say you will do what he will leave you but when he doesn't leave you it means there's something there he's stopping something from finding expression say i refuse to be a slave of any spirit i refuse to be a slave of any spirit set an ambushment they began to fight each other many ministries have been destroyed and if you are not spiritual you will not see it you think you are doing you are not justified you are a slave people join to fight to break ministries they join to fight to break businesses they join to fight to destroy what God is building in the midst of that contest you think it's about who is right or who is wrong no it is more than that certain spirits have been released and they have come to enslave you i always tell you the story you know a time came people were doing complaint here and, and we were praying when we began to pray for some of the people then one of them they deem is a is a is a spirit in the air and that's written now said my name is murmuring i'm a legend what do you want he's a commander of a legend that means he has demons spirit under him and his assignment is to cause division and complaints and murmuring and around that time there were a lot of complaints and murmuring and the church had reduced we arrested that power we began to pray to cast and to clear all of those demons of darkness that have been assigned by satan to come and create confusion before the whole thing was now reset back all the confusions were reset back so why people were complaining was not because they want to complain complaining the Bible speaks against complaining he said do all things without murmuring and complaining when you find yourself murmuring and complaining you have come under the influence of a spirit we don't complain about the things of God except you know that this thing you can prove scripturally that it's not consistent with scripture even that one there's a way to go about things you can approach with your scriptures or if you know a senior minister who you think this person respect you can go and talk to the person with your scripture let the person be brought to order but when you start to create sects and division no there's a problem you don't go to your father's house and then among your siblings you are trying to incite people against your father he's a demon of this honor they want to put a curse on you they want you to become worse than your father don't go and fight your mother in the name of thinking that your mother did something wrong no matter what your father has done or your mother has done 
is their own life. Let them be alone. Once you hold on to it, you will do the same thing to your children. And they will prove it to you that it's not by might nor by power. You have not said, judge not that you be not judged. He said, the same measure. He said, if anyone is overtaken in a sin, let you that are spiritual, he said, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. If not, you fall into the same thing. If you don't do it in meekness and you rise and think, my father was not wise. Your father was not wise. <laughs> in his days, he was the wisest. <laughs> he, if you will not help him, don't go and fight him. If you will not help him and be sympathizing with him, you don't go and fight. And don't go and be holding crutches because of what he has done, you are now allowing spirit of dishonor. It's a spirit. That is the spirit that makes Ghana not to progress. There's a spirit of dishonor. You see, we may check many things. Nigeria, but trust me, if you go to Nigeria, you will love many things. I'm telling you. I've been in Ghana, and there's so much pride in Ghana. Hey, the car I'm driving, a lot of rich, rich people in Nigeria might not even drive it. There are some sects like these guys who are who are driving some bad. Usually, average rich person who is doing very well might not. He might be driving some 2004, 2007, eight, some cars like that. And they are cool. But if you go and you see the the development in Charlie, part of the reason why is because of this this another Ghana, there's a demon, one of the demons that control the atmosphere, that shuts down the hand of God over Ghana, the move of God is that the sons despise the fathers we despise them, so what is on them cannot even fall on us it's a spirit, and if you carry that spirit, and you try to incite your siblings against your mother or your father you try to now, you want to prove that your mother is wrong Who born dog? <laughs> you want to go and prove that your father is wrong. You can know that he's wrong. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying he's right. You can even know. But to not be a tool in the hands of darkness, allow the word of God to guide you. The word of God says, Forgive. The word of God says, What? Anna. So you choose the way of Anna. When a demon wants to attack a man, what they will do first is to lure the man out of the will of God. If a principality wants to stop a move of God, what he will do first is to lure whoever is leading that move out of the will of God. Then they can now attack. When Balaam came to curse Israel, he couldn't curse them. What he did was what? Release women. Girls among the Israelites. Then they committed fornication and adultery with them. Then the curse that he couldn't curse it now came upon them God's anger came and there were slaughters 24,000 people died the same day 24,000 soldiers when you go against Israel you just kill a few if they record dead the people that will die they can mention their names and it will not be one chapter of the Bible it will just be and Israel lost 15 men and they say, but of the Philistine, they lost 32,000. 15 to 32,000. Is, is it small? But 24,000 people went because a gate was open. Say, so I refuse to be a tool in the hands of darkness. I refuse to allow a strange spirit settle upon me. A spirit that let me fight another person. A spirit that moves me out of the will of God. Whenever you see yourself moving out of the will of God, a spirit is moving you. He said, and the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the, the Lord blessed him. He says, and the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and what? Eshtal. So he said, the spirit of the Lord began to what? Move him. 
I'm talking to you even about your desires. I said we are looking at activities of spirit. As you are now, you are at the mercy of spirit. It is either the spirit of God. That is why we are taught to pray. We are taught to engage in activities of the spirit so that our souls will easily be able to pick the signals of God so that we can easily be moved by God so that it will be difficult for darkness to have access around us because man is supposed to be a tool in the hands of spirit but what matters is which spirit when you choose to come to church you are following the motivation of the spirit when you choose not to come every time every day what we watch, what we listen to, there's a conflict for your interest. And the challenge is that it is unknown to you. You think it is you. I said, you think what? The one we read, he said, that, and the spirit of the Lord what? began to move him. In fact, I can give you many scriptures, you will shock. And the spirit began to what? Move him. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me to wife. And his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. So at that moment, even his emotions, some families, everybody must have a child out of wedlock. When it is time, the spirit begins to move you. The Bible says, when Jesus came out of the water, the Holy Ghost moved him, drove him to the wilderness <laughs> to be tempted. It wasn't his will. Something drove him. You just feel like let me go to the mountain and fast. Zibale to us. You don't know what is going on. <laughs> or maybe you are just fasting and say, This week I will eat. <laughs> Desires. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord and that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. So Samson's emotions was being moved. What he liked was not natural. I said what he liked was what? Not natural. But spiritual. Motivated by spirit. Zale hmm. Kobe. Say spirit of the Lord. Help me. I refuse to be a slave. Of any spirit. Other than God other than the spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let's read Jesus' own in Matthew chapter 4 activities of spirit hmm. what do you have to do what you have to do is to always take time to assess things every decision we take has a consequence every decision you take has two different options it is either leading you out of the will of God or into the will of God it is more than your emotions it is more than that so then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil then was Jesus what led up this was after he came out of baptism John baptized him then was he led up how do spirit connect with us I'll give you one just one then we'll pray they connect with you through what you may call your weaknesses your personality there are certain spirits that are peculiar to certain personalities because different personalities have different weaknesses it is very easy for a spirit of fear to attach itself to a melancholic person it is very easy for a spirit of pride to attach itself to a choleric. 
and spirit of worldliness and promiscuity and all kinds of things in that category to attach itself to a sanguine and the spirit of laziness indolence unproductiveness phlegmatic those are spirits that can easily attach themselves you see when God wants to now also use the same people you can now use maybe like the melancholy people in the area of preaching strong holiness and consecration yeah because it's like that is their field and the apostolic will be for their choleris it will now fight against the systems and break down what they think is not there at, at the same time this other spirit can easily so what looks like your weakness is a gate because in your weakness is where we find appetite that's where your appetite whether for god or for the things of darkness for the things of the world those appetites are expressed through that side say holy ghost help me it is why god gives us his word you see the word of god is like that it's supposed to bring transformation so it doesn't matter your personality when we come to christ he now brings us his word the word can now change you to become what you are not if we can give attention to the scriptures if you can give attention to our work with the holy ghost you have to know the scripture because when the holy ghost comes like i was telling you about the story when the guy was talking the spirit of god now said it is god that gave the increase what if you don't know that scripture you are gone you are traded they will trade you away it is god that give the increase if you are flag a phlegmatic person cannot say no easily it's a weakness it's a weakness inside the inability to say no meanwhile if you try melancholy you slap you you touch a melancholic lady in a way you shouldn't touch maybe you will see slap before you now say sorry it is instinctive so your will must be powered if you are flared your will must be what powered it should be part of your prayer a spirit can come and knock at the door of this one and some they will find themselves that they resonate more because as cholera the tendency of pride is because you are smart you, you think faster you can be a bully demons of bully and so when they find you like that then someone like adolf hitler you can now kill everybody yeah those spirits now they resonate so we allow the word of god to cut through our souls the word can cut through you until your character which is your personality now is altered completely over time hmm? over time people may look at you and they may think you know it is not this person he or she has become so calm he or she has become so sober he or she now has self-control. He or she cannot say no. Say, Father, any weakness in me that gives access to any spirit to enslave me as I pray now, I ask for your strength to replace my weakness in the name of Jesus Christ. Show me your way, your word. Do something to me that destroys that weakness in the name of Jesus lead me to the books lead me to the messages to the people that will help me to be strong in the name of Jesus lead me to the places in the name of Jesus Christ lift your voice begin to pray ask the Lord to help you spirit will connect with you through your appetite through your weaknesses shaka patayas Fadea Samananosh ZTKK Paladar. He says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coasts, and that thine hand might be with me and that thou would escape me from evil that it may not grip me and God granted that which he requested 
Zatekopoash. Spirit of the Lord. We ask that you lead us to the right materials for transformation. Transformation is not only about the prayer we are praying. The prayer is to allow God to now bring you into the right company. Some of us, you have to be brought into the right company. Then your, your life now begins to transform. Some of us, God will now lead you. You may find some books. Some people will, will, will recommend some books. You may go online and just meet some message. And then a shift now begins. Certain things begin to happen around you. There will be some scriptures that the, the light now comes to you. And then you become sober. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Shaka Batayas. We will not allow the gate of spirit, the gate to, of our lives to be open to spirit. Spirit of anger, bitterness, envy, jealousy. Spirit of lust, division. Spirit of dishonor. There's even spirit of, of self-righteousness. Pride. There are people that operate in the spirit of self-righteousness and pride. And so sometimes we, we fight each other in the body. Why we fight each other in the body is because there's, there's pride and there's self-righteousness. They are, they are spirit. When you read Rejoinet's book, Rejoinet's book, The Final Quest, you, you see some of the armies of darkness that he met. In the final quest, one of the battalions is what self righteousness, pride, different kinds of spirits that possess individuals in the in the body of Christ. Then we begin to cause problem among ourselves. We begin to fight each other. But may the Lord deliver us from such. In the name of Jesus, that humility will fill our hearts. That we will understand that we are all made righteous by the righteousness of God. And that we are all saved by the grace of God. Is that not by works lest any man should boast. Shaka bias. Spirit of the Lord. We see a lot of self-righteousness in the body. When men think that they are made, you know, the ones to... Sometimes we think we are the ones to go and say this this one is this or that one is that this one is no no i don't i don't see that assignment in the church jesus never when he was ministering there, there was no time he had time to now go and review no even the pharisees said they don't keep the laws but when they teach you keep it that's what he told the people he said they themselves don't keep the law but he said they sit in the seat of moses he said but they sit in the seat of moses so he said when they teach you the laws keep them even though they themselves don't keep it. He even called them open sepulchre and you know all of that. But he said when they teach you, he was not propagating rebellion against men who are anointed. In the body, whether someone is in line with God now or not, he is still called the Lord's word anointed. That's the way David made reference to Saul. He still called him the Lord's anointed. He is anointed, but when he meets God, his judgment will be different. Say, Father, help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. Shakata. In your home, let not the spirit of division come upon anybody here. You fight it, you reject it, you rebel against it. Among siblings, among siblings in the nuclear family, there shouldn't be we allow certain spirits. And then there's division and family scatter. Brother here, sister here, auntie here, father here. No, no. That brings the will of Satan to pass. Say, Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. Shalada <laughs> da 
Of my weaknesses, Holy Ghost. Talk to Jesus. Talk to him. Oh Jesus. He can help you. He can transform you. He can transform your personality. By his word he will help you By his spirit By the men and women he sends to you By the books he brings your way The messages he brings your way There will be an attrition An attrition An attrition Kappa Sapata Rekepatia Sayata Swateke Peledia Takamante Soltata Siateke Rekapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapap
bring her up. Listen, the Bible says that Jabez called on the Lord and the Lord helped him. Jabez had issues. Some of us, there are a lot of issues. Even men are rejecting you. Different things are happening around you because of the way that you have, you have been framed. Some things have gone on. But you are crying that, Lord, help me. Help me. Deliver me from what is able to destroy me. Sakapaya. Hey, there's something that they have linked to you. That you know this thing. Kapalaka. Saya. Sayata. We know him when he began. We know her when, he be, when she began. But he has been with Jesus. Hey! Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 